has lived in Rome for the past couple of years, and he's now here at Rome's Comedy Club to be our first performer for the evening, Ryan Costello! up here, last show of the season, Rome's <coughs> Comedy Club. Uh, so I just recently got a bit of good news. My wife and I have found out that my wife is pregnant with our, <laughs> our second child. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's thrilling, thrilling news. It doesn't come as a complete surprise because we were going for this. This is one of the... <laughs> Planned pregnancies, which is very surreal because in my previous sexual experience, I had been actively doing whatever I could to avoid that outcome. But here we were going for it, you know, and it would have been an easy pitch to 17 year old me. You know, you just say, hey, hey, kid, listen, all the sex you can handle, no condoms, just let it fly, brother. Yeah. But to 32 year old me, bit of a more difficult sell. Because frankly, the whole planned pregnancy thing seemed an awful lot like work. <laughs> there's this strict schedule you have to follow. There's a, there's a calendar involved. <laughs> Lots of meetings, meetings with doctors. All this discussion, we're discussing, discussing all the time. <laughs> And it didn't help that my wife was like this militant, hard-assed, she had her way or the highway, we had to do it this way, like this, you know? And she was all, all into her body. Oh, oh, okay, I, uh, uh, I think I'm ovulating. I think I'm ovulating. Okay, okay, it's the left one, it's the left one, it's the left one, it's the left one. Take the baby down to my mother's, come back up here and strip. I want to see you in that bedroom in 10 minutes. Go, 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 go. Whoa. It was intense. It just seemed an awful lot like work. I mean, you know, if you gave me a keyboard and a mouse and a monitor, but for the fucking, I'd actually be at work. <laughs> <laughs> just so weird. Just so weird, you know? But of course, we're thrilled, we're happy, it's great. We're blessed and all that jazz, you know? But uh, I can't help but think about how the next nine months, be devoted to taking care of my pregnant wife, which is not a problem, but for the fact that my pregnant wife is also Italian. <laughs> and Italian pregnant women, much like the geographical region from which they come, are prone to potentially dangerous, unexpected, volcanic-like activity. <laughs> Is she here tonight? She's not here tonight, thank God. <laughs> Most of the time my wife is dormant though, don't get me wrong. She's dormant. Okay? Life is good, it's easy. It's easy, but then without warning, without any notice, she just erupts. Ryan! <laughs> What is? <laughs> well, uh, Amore, uh, from, from this point of view, I don't see anything at the moment. Uh, this here, this here, this wet, what is? You mean those couple drops of water there? Yes, the couple drops of... Why don't you ever help me clean? Why don't you do anything around our house? You were never like this in America. Why do you need our life here? <laughs> so now, ladies and gentlemen, I find I, I have a mop. I have a mop. A mopping. What to me, moments ago, was a perfectly clean and dry kitchen floor. But this is what having a pregnant wife is like. You know? 
it's amazing though what happens to the female body during pregnancy. It's beautiful. It's incredible. It's incredible. All the senses get heightened, almost to superhuman level. My wife has like superhuman smell. She'd be like, "Well, I really like that cologne you're wearing." I don't. I'm not wearing cologne. I haven't worn cologne since last Saturday. She'd be like, "Would you have an egg? An egg?" <laughs> Did you eat an egg? I <laughs> uh, might have had a hard-boiled egg at lunch. Yeah, yeah. What is that? Coriander? No, 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 no. It's paprika. paprika. I can't remember what I had for lunch. My pregnant wife can sniff it out. <laughs> but that's what it's, you know, this is a pregnant wife. This is how it goes. This is what you do. This is how you handle it. But uh, it is a bit more interesting this time because we already have a kid. We have a two-year-old in the mix. And two-year-olds can be very challenging. <laughs> Pregnancy or no. Because two-year-olds, although they seem still like a little baby, you know, you have to do a lot of babyish type stuff with them, they're actually a little person. And they see and hear everything that goes on. Everything. And then they, it, they assimilate it and work it into their own little kid life. Is this mic working? Okay, can you guys hear me? Okay. Hello. He's, he's trying to fix the levels. Oh. So you can be heard in the back and you're Thank you, thank you for doing it during my bit. That's <laughs> 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 two year olds. No. Yeah. So these two-year-olds. How's that? How's this? Yes. Can I be your guinea pig? Can you hear me in the back? Yeah. Can you hear me in the back? Yeah. Good. 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 You want to know about two-year-olds? Yeah. <laughs> good challenge. Okay. They see and hear and everything. They assimilate it into their little kid lives. We're at the kitchen table the other day, my daughter's eating, everything's okay, everything's cool. And she just drops the plate onto the floor, just pushes it onto the floor, and she goes, Oh, shit balls. <laughs> said, shit balls? Shit and ball. I, I mean, presumably she's learned this from me, I'm the only one that speaks English with this kid, but I've never used this two-word combination before. <laughs> And the worst part of it was, the worst part of it was, is that she speaks mostly Italian, so she said it with this Roman Italian accent. It wasn't shit balls, it was sheet balls. So, so weird. It's weird. But you know, there's many aspects of raising a two-year-old that can be that, that can be very existentially sort of harrowing. You know, you, you take a take a stock, take stock of where your life is. You look at yourself, you know, oh my God, you know. Especially now, we're in the midst of the potty training, okay? The potty training activity, and I'm not talking about wiping an ass, people. I can wipe an ass, right? My kids too. I've been wiping asses for two years. It's not a big deal. I'm talking about giving motivational speeches to feces. I'm standing over the toilet, my daughter's on the toilet, gripping my leg, and I'm going, okay, poopy. Okay, poopy, come out of there. You can do it. Come, come right out of there. No problem. Come, let's go for a swim. It's just a swim. The water's nice. You can go and join your other poopy family down in the pipes. Come on. Come on. And you know, I don't know what's more frightening about that, the fact of what I said, or the fact that it came out so simply and easily and effortlessly, you know, who have I become? <laughs> I'll tell you who I've become. I've become a, a father, a husband, a family man, you know, and it's wonderful and I wouldn't trade it for anything. However, <laughs> there are aspects of the single life of being a bachelor that from time to time I find that I miss. Even some of the most pathetic, desperate, soul-sucking, horrible moments of being single, they kind of don't seem all that bad. I was talking to a single friend of mine. 
said, hey man, what are you up to this weekend? He said, well, you know, I don't have any family, I don't have any kids, so I'll probably be at home, I'll watch some Netflix, smoke a little pot, masturbate, you know. And I was like, I was like, dude, 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 that sounds awesome. Thank y'all very much, see you next fall.